Welcome back to our Jack tutorial series. Today we're going to be looking at vertex manipulation. Now I was going to save this for later on because it's so robust, but I think there's so many uses for it that we should just go ahead and dive right in. So this is going to be a bit of a crash course on vertex manipulation. So let's go ahead and open up a new map. Choose your game. And I'm just going to say cancel on this because we're going to just work with a blank map. So let's go ahead and get a texture to work with. I'm just going to pick this Babtech and let's go ahead and draw a block with it. Alright, so with the object selected, we could click here in the bottom of the map tools bar to open vertex manipulation mode, and what you'll notice immediately is all these white and yellow dots appear. The white handles represent our vertices, or more than one vertex. A vertex is really just a corner of your face, or side of the object. These yellow handles are edges of your object, and they really just represent the midpoint between two vertices. Much like the clipping tool, the vertex manipulation mode has three modes. First one just shows the vertices, the white handle. The second one just shows the edges, the yellow handles. And the third mode shows both vertices and edges. I like to just work with just the vertices most of the time because it's a little easier on the eyes. In the 3D view, you can select vertices one at a time like this. Or if you hold down control, you can select as many as you want. In the 2D view, clicking a handle is going to usually select more than one vertex. In this case, we're selecting both because they're in a line like that. We need to be careful when using the vertex manipulation tool because you can accidentally create what's called an invalid structure, which will prevent your map from compiling. If the vertices of a face are not coplanar, then we have an invalid structure. Imagine that this face is like a piece of paper on a desk, and the four vertices are the corners of the paper. The piece of paper can never be bent. If you ever warp the paper, then the vertices are no longer coplanar, and you have an invalid structure. You never want to have a face that bends like this. Instead, Imagine now that the piece of paper is on a clipboard. You could rotate the piece of paper any direction in 3D space without warping it. The paper would still be flat, so this would be considered a valid structure, whereas what we had before is invalid. If you ever create a shape like this and you need it to be that way, you can always use the clipping tool and slice this in half. Now you have two separate shapes and these two triangles are now coplanar. The two faces are still flat. Sometimes you don't know that you've created an invalid structure, and that's why you want to check your map for problems periodically. Just go to Map, and then click Check for Problems. Now, it says that there's no Info Player Start. We know that. We can ignore that. But you'll get this message that says, Invalid Solid Structure, Face is not Planar. As an alternative to slicing the geometry in half with the Clipping Tool, we can always click on Fix here, and it'll automatically fix it that way. Another type of invalid structure would be any shape that is concave, or curves inward. A convex shape, or one that curves outward, like this, would be acceptable. A concave shape would be something like this. Now you see, the moment we started to do that, we started to get some issues going on in 3D, so we can't have that. If you want to have a shape like that, you'd have to just slice it in half with the clipping tool. And then we get two convex shapes, which are valid. Now up here in the top right, we have a little button that says Toggle Solid Validity Restrictions for Vertex Manipulation. If we turn this off, it will no longer allow us to create invalid structures. See, I can stretch it like this to create shapes outward, but I'm restricted from creating concave shapes. And so having that unchecked can prevent this. The same is true if we were to stretch a vertex up like this, making it no longer coplanar. You can see it's not allowing me to do that. However, I can still drag two vertices up like this because the face is still planar. So just remember that. Unchecked means the restrictions are on. So we'll keep that unchecked so that we don't accidentally create anything that's invalid. We'll go ahead and look at this other toggle as well. This one's called Toggle Automatic Coplanar Face Merging in Vertex Manipulation Mode. So what does that mean? Toggling this button will allow two faces to be merged into one when they become coplanar. So I'm going to take this face and this face and make them coplanar, and you'll see what happens. If I select these two vertices and pull them down in this direction, these two faces are now coplanar. If this was toggled, they would merge and become one face. Now we only have the six points, and we no longer have the line through the middle of the face. 
So next we want to look at merging vertices. So with just vertices showing, I'm going to take these two and I'm going to pinch them together to this bottom right here. And now those two will actually merge into the corner ones and then they disappear. So something you can do with this, for example, is let's say we have a cylinder. So we could manipulate the cylinder by merging the vertices and we can create a cube, which I'm doing right now. So that's pretty useful. Now you will notice you'll get a funky texture like this and you're going to get a map problem that says texture axis is perpendicular to face. We can click on fix in the problems window and you see how it repaired it. Or you can just click on the face and go to reset in your texture application mode. That's how you fix that and don't be surprised if you see that. But they will need to be fixed before compiling the map. Now we also have some additional options on a right click menu. The weld vertices option is basically going to function like how I just showed you. It will merge any of the selected vertices. If you select some vertices, then right click and choose weld, you see it pinches them together. Next is scale vertices. So if we were to select, say, all the vertices on top, we could right click, go to scale, and then we can dial up this shape. You see it's making a wide shape. There, we can do that in the opposite direction as well. And if you want to click one of these coordinates, that'll lock it so it'll ignore those directions. See, now it's only going in the Y direction. Now it's only going in the X direction. The next option we have is Split Face. And how this works is basically the opposite of face merging. This will allow us to create a new face. You need to put it into Edge Mode, the mode with the yellow handles, and select two opposite edges. And then you can right click and go to Split Face. And now it gives us a new line between the selected edge handle, and we can manipulate this edge in any way we want to. So I'm going to pull that up and make a new shape. Next is triangulate, which is super useful. If you ever create an invalid structure, instead of fixing in the map problems window or attempting to split the shape using the clipping tool, you can use triangulate and the editor will attempt to separate any invalid faces into two triangular faces that are each coplanar. Next we have Snap to Vertex. This is simply going to snap the selected vertex to the nearest grid intersection. And then finally, Clear Selection simply just clears the selected vertices. It just deselects all selected vertices. And there we have it. That's how you use vertex manipulation. Thanks for watching.